We're going to take the next few minutes to see how to quickly change the size and the edge hardness of the brush, as well as change a few additional attributes, which will make you much more efficient when painting in Photoshop. I'll start by creating a new document. I'll select the default Photoshop size and open that, and then use Command-0 in order to zoom in. Now to select the brush, I'll tap the B key, and I'm going to right click on the brush icon in the options bar just to reset the tool. To the right, we have a preview as well as the size of the brush, and if we click on the downward pointing arrow, we can access the brush preset picker. Here I can change attributes such as the size of the brush, the hardness of the brush, as well as the shape of the brush and the angle. Below that, we have our recently used brushes, so yours might look different from mine. Below that are a number of different default presets that we can access at any time. I'm going to begin by selecting the soft round brush, and then I can tap the return key or the enter key in order to close the preset picker. Now, if I want to change the brush size, there are a variety of different ways to do this. I can tap the right bracket key in order to increase the brush size or tap the left bracket key to decrease the brush size. I can also just hold the bracket keys in order to quickly get a larger or smaller brush size. But maybe a more visual way to change the size would be to hold down the Option and the Control key on the Mac or on Windows, you would Alt and then right click and you drag either left or right to change the diameter or the size of the brush and you can drag up or down to change the hardness of the brush. If you want to access the brush preset picker, regardless of where you are on screen, you can use the context sensitive menus. So either command click on Mac or just right click and then select the different settings that you want and tap enter to hide it again. Let's go ahead and select a color. I'll use the color panel here and I just want to pick a nice blue color. Then I'll start painting. One of the things to notice is that as I paint, we see the size of the cursor, but the paint actually extends beyond the cursor. I'm going to right click to access the brush preset picker and I'll set the hardness to zero and then I'll paint. And you can see that the paint is actually spraying outside of that circle. So it's just important to know that it sprays beyond. If I right click again, and set the hardness all the way up to 100% and I click. Now we can see that it's constrained to only paint within that circle. If I want to paint a straight line, I can click and then hold down the shift key and that'll constrain it to a straight line. We're seeing a little bit of a jump between the individual paint strokes and that's just because of the spacing that I have set. In order to change the spacing, I would need to click on the icon that would show our brush settings and our brushes. In the brush settings, I could decrease the spacing. And now when I click and drag, I'm going to get a nice smooth stroke. The only drawback to decreasing the spacing is that if you're trying to paint really quickly with a very large brush, it can be very processor intensive. There might be a delay between the time you make your gesture or mark on the paper and when Photoshop lays down that stroke. If I ever need to connect the dots between two areas, I can click once in order to set down a paint stroke, hold down the shift key and then click again and Photoshop will draw a straight line between those two points. All right, let's use the edit menu and I'll choose fill and let's just fill the canvas with white again. Let's take a look at a few of the additional options in the options bar. We can change the opacity for the brush and I can do this numerically. As long as I have the brush tool selected and I tap the five key, I'll get 50%. Or if I tap six, I'll get 60%. If you tap quickly like four or five, you'll get 45%. So now when I click and paint, I'm only going to get 45% of my foreground color. If I click and paint over it, you can see that I slowly start building up the paint strokes. If I want to return to 100%, I just tap the zero key. 
Now, the flow is a little bit different from the opacity. The flow setting is going to control the speed at which the paint is laid down. So I imagine it's like pressing the nozzle of a can of spray paint. Are you pressing the nozzle just a little bit or are you pressing it all the way down? So with the flow at 100%, you are spraying it at 100% as quickly as possible. But when I move the flow down, now it's going to take a while in order to build that up. I'm gonna move it all the way down to 2% just to make sure that we can see. And I'm also going to get a softer edge brush. So I'll right click and change the hardness down to zero. I'll tap return to dismiss that. And now as I click and paint, we can watch as it slowly builds up because I have the flow set down so low. All right, I'll set the flow back up to 100%. And we need to talk a little bit about smoothing. So as you make longer strokes, it can be helpful to use the smoothing slider. I'm gonna get a little smaller brush by using the left bracket key. And you can see that I can't really create a super smooth paint stroke with the mouse. But if I increase the smoothing, and now I try to paint, we can see that I can get a much smoother stroke over a long area with that smoothing set up higher. There's also a really cool feature with smoothing and you can access it under the gear icon. It's called pulled string mode. I'll select that and now when I click to lay down my dot, you'll notice that I can move anywhere within that magenta circle and nothing happens. It's not until I actually press beyond that circle that Photoshop will start drawing the line. Then if I wanna change directions, I can go ahead and move anywhere within that circle. And again, it's not until I pull that string that Photoshop will change the directions. So this can be really helpful if like me, you don't have a very steady hand and you need to change the direction. All right, another way that paint strokes can interact with one another is by using the blend mode. I'll get a little bit bigger of a brush using that right bracket key and I'm gonna change the opacity to 50% by tapping the five key, and then I'll change the blend mode to multiply. Let's also use edit, fill, and just fill this with white again. Now I'll make one paint stroke, and let's go ahead and set the smoothing back down to 10% and also turn off the pulled string mode. So I made the one paint stroke, and now I'm going to multiply that paint stroke together every time I click and paint over it. And while the opacity is having an effect, it's also the multiply blend mode that's going to continue to multiply these together even far darker than my foreground color. If I want the opposite effect, I could choose screen. And now every time I paint, it's actually lightening that area. It's almost as if I'm painting with bleach. All right, I'm gonna fill the background one more time, but this time I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut. I'm gonna hold down the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows and tap the Delete key, and that will fill with my background color. Now, if you're planning on doing a lot of painting in Photoshop, and you don't have to necessarily be a painter, you might be working with a lot of masks. Well, I would recommend that if you are, that you invest in a pressure sensitive tablet. So I'm gonna switch over. I've got a Wacom tablet here that I'm going to start painting with. And the biggest advantage here is when you're working with a mouse and you do one paint stroke, you can change the size and the opacity between each paint stroke, but not during the paint stroke. So I've got my pressure sensitive pen now, and I'm gonna set the blend mode back up to normal. I'll bring the opacity back up to 100%, and let's take a look at some of those presets in the brush preset picker. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger so we see two rows of presets here. You'll notice that we've got soft round and hard round presets, but then the next set, they actually vary in size and we can see that the stroke will taper. So I can select the soft round pressure size or the hard round pressure size, and I'm going to get pressure sensitivity of the size of my brush. So even though I've got a relatively large brush, 
as I start painting, depending on the pressure that I lay down, I can get a large brush or I can back off on the pressure and I can get a small brush. If I return to the preset picker and we change the preset to opacity, now when I paint very lightly, I'm just gonna lay down a little bit of paint, but as I press harder, I can lay down more and more paint. I can also choose to vary the opacity as well as the size at one time. And I can either do that by selecting another brush or let's just move this out of the way. And I can click on this icon right here, which is going to override any of the settings that are applied to the pen and give me pressure sensitivity. And I can also enable this option right here, which will override the settings of the selected preset and give me pressure sensitivity for size. So now I can start painting lightly and I get a smaller brush and not a lot of ink, but as I press harder, not only do I get a larger brush, but I also get more ink laid down. So as you can see, this pressure sensitivity with the tablet is really an advantage. And there you go, that's how you can quickly select a brush and change the essential settings like size and opacity, flow and smoothing for the painting tools in Photoshop.